Guitar legend Joe Walsh became one of rock and roll's finest guitarists even before he joined the Eagles and made amazing contributions to one of the greatest American songs, Hotel California. Top guitarists of that era loved his style. Eric Clapton once said, Joe Walsh is one of the best guitarists to surface in some time. I don't listen to many records, but I listen to his. The Who's guitarist Pete Townsend called Joe Walsh a fluid and intelligent player, adding that there's not many like that around. And that's what Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin said. Joe Walsh has a tremendous feel for the instrument. I've loved his style since the early James Gang. Actually, Joe Walsh met Jimmy Page for the first time when James Gang opened for Led Zeppelin in 1969. In the United States, people knew the Yardbirds and they came to discover Led Zeppelin. Joe Walsh quickly became good friends with Jimmy Page. Now let's take a quick biography look there on Joe Walsh, uh, where he came from, and how he became a guitar player. Joe Walsh was born in Kansas, 1947, but he and his family moved to Columbus, Ohio. Joe got his first guitar when he was 10. Inspired by the Beatles, Joe decided to become a rock musician as well. Later, Walsh started his musical career by playing the bass guitar in a locally popular group the Nomads, in Madison, New Jersey. After high school, Joe attended Kent State University, where he spent time in various bands playing around the Cleveland area, including a band called the Measles. After the Kent State Massacre in 1970, Joe dropped out of college to pursue his musical career. Walsh commented in 2012, Being at the shootings really affected me profoundly. I decided that maybe I don't need a degree that bad. In January 1968, Walsh joined Cleveland-based James Gang. One night in May 1968, James Gang had to play a concert in Detroit at the Grand Ballroom, opening for Cream. Imagine that. At the last minute, guitarist Ronnie Silverman told the others that he would not join them at the show. Needing the money to pay for gas to get home, the James Gang took the stage as a trio and Joe was forced to learn on the fly how to carry rhythm and lead duties while now singing lead simultaneously. It proved a revelation. Permanently reconfigured as a trio, the James Gang quickly developed a huge following in the Midwest and landed a record deal leading to a 1969 debut album, Your Album. Very cool album. Check it out if you get a chance. Great stuff. That became an FM radio staple and drew the ears of guitar aficionados like Pete Townsend, who personally invited Joe and the James Gang to Joey the Who on tour. So when Led Zeppelin just released their first album on the 12th of January in 1969, they came on tour to the United States. They played several places and one of them was Cleveland. James Gang was their opening act. So according to Joe Walsh, the story goes like this. Jimmy Page went up to Joe and said, look, the Yardbirds is great, and I played on so many records, meaning on how many studio sessions work he did, but this Telecaster ain't cutting it for Led Zeppelin. I don't know what to do. Jimmy Page played a 59 psychedelic Telecaster, Dragoncaster, while with the Yardbirds, and he was still playing it when Led Zeppelin played their first gigs in 1968 and early 1969. According to Joe, Les Pauls didn't even exist in England at that time. They didn't become popular yet. They were pretty easy to find and they didn't cost very much. Of course, a while later, the Les Paul became the guitar for rock and roll and Jimmy Page made a huge contribution to this. He helped Gibson to sell their Les Pauls in 1972 more than any other guitar. So Jimmy continued, I gotta get a double coil situation. I've looked for Les Pauls, but there aren't any in England. Do you know any way you could help me to get one? Joe Walsh had two Les Pauls at that point. He found one in the basement of a family-owned music store in Athens, Ohio, where Ohio University is. It was in the basement. He just walked in a garage and it was all boxes. And he asked what he got downstairs. And there it was, a 1960 Les Paul Sunburst. And the second Les Paul he owned, he found through a friend. Joe says that he traded his friend some stuff for that one. He didn't precisely say what the stuff was really, but he got a coveted 1959 Les Paul out of that deal. I mean, come on, how cool. So Joe Walsh owned two Sunburst Les Pauls, a 59 and a 60. 
He didn't like the fat neck on the 59, which is pretty big. I have a 58 reissue, and some people call them a baseball bat neck. I mean, they're pretty thick. Um, so he sent it to Lay's Guitar Shop in Akron, Ohio. He asked them to make it as thin as his 1960 Les Paul. Lays has a special technique they use for determining how much wood they can take off the back of the neck without exposing the truss rod. So Joe told Virgil to make it as thin as possible. When Joe got it back, he put it aside for a rainy day. When Jimmy Page said, oh, I'm in big trouble, I need a Les Paul. Can you help me to get one here? Joe Walsh gave Jimmy that 1959 burst and said, look, try this one out. This will solve the problem, and if you like it, we'll talk. Several times Joe thought about asking for it back, but Jimmy really loved that guitar and wanted to keep it for himself. According to Joe Walsh, Jimmy Page eventually paid him about 1500 bucks for the guitar, and that was a little bit less than what he had paid for it. That's funny, because back in 1969, Les Pauls didn't cost that much yet. You could buy a 59 Les Paul for several hundred dollars. So Joe claims that it was Jimmy Page's first Les Paul, and Jimmy calls it number one. Jimmy Page used it to record Led Zeppelin II that May, and he couldn't do without that guitar on stage. However, that wasn't Jimmy Page's first Les Paul. He already had a 1960 Gibson Les Paul Custom, which he bought in the early 60s and used it as his main instrument during his session work days. Black Beauty, that's how they call it in the U.S., was stolen from Jimmy Page in April of 1970 during Led Zeppelin's U.S. tour. Jimmy recorded a whole lot of love with this guitar, as well as most of the songs he did as a session musician. It disappeared at an airport. Jimmy posted an ad for the missing guitar in Rolling Stone magazine, but he didn't get it back. Jimmy regretted that he took it on tour, and he said, I didn't want to take it out of the house. Funny that once that I did take it out, it got nicked. They say that Jimmy Page got his Black Beauty guitar back a few years ago, but Jimmy himself hasn't released an official statement. Funny, according to Jimmy Page, that was Joe Walsh who insisted and convinced him to buy that 59 Sunburst. Jimmy couldn't say no, and eventually Joe was right. The guitar became and remained Jimmy's favorite Les Paul guitar throughout his years with Led Zeppelin. And as he acquired others, he started referring to it as number one. Jimmy calls it my mistress, my wife, and who won't beat you up for alimony and never leave you. Jimmy loves that guitar. On October 9, 2012, Joe Walsh posted a photo with Jimmy Page on his Twitter account and wrote, Jimmy Page made an appearance at my New York show last night. Great to be reunited with an old friend. I personally have seen Joe Walsh many times and saw the James Gang reunion show. He is an amazing guitarist.